All right, Minnie Manson, how you doing? Hello. Thanks for joining me on Grady TV. <laughs> Hello, Grady. How you been? I've been very sick for a long time. You got COVID? Yeah. Health, unfortunately. Looks like the video went away. Now I'm susceptible. Looks like your video froze up. This is my first interview in over a month. Luckily, last month I made a whole bunch of videos and I've been releasing them all throughout the month so people think that I'm still around. But I'm down to my last video now and until I get my lungs get well enough so that I can sing again, I'm not going to be able to record anything new. Your favorite entertainer is suffering right now and is dying to get out there and do some more work. But the good news is I'm losing a lot of weight. Look at my face. Yeah, you look good. That big giant belly I had is just nearly non-existent now. <laughs> well, I want to get into your life here. Let's start with, with your uh, childhood. Where, where were you born? I was born in Chicago, Illinois. Mm. 1969. And uh, how was your upbringing? What was your family like? Well, I had a mom and dad. They never got divorced. They were from the World War II generation. They um, were relig very religious fundamental Baptists. My father was a fundamental Baptist. What do we call it? Fundamental Baptist minister. You have to bear with me. I'm very, I'm very sick, so my memories. <coughs> yeah, that's fine. <coughs> that's all I do is cough all day long. It's okay. Like I, I said, hope. I can I can edit this, so it's you know no big deal. Edit that part out then. So your father was a Baptist minister. Yeah, I, my father was a Baptist minister, and, and my mom was the secretary housewife. She was a walking fucking doormat who just let my dad beat her, abuse her, shit on her, throw plates across the room, smash plates on her head, throw them plates at the wall when he didn't like her cooking, which was at least once a week. Then she'd come down and she'd get drunk and beat us, me, my brother, my sister. And my, my mom and dad were both alcoholics and beat us all because you're fucking hypocrites. My brother used to call my dad the sinister minister because he'd be drinking his alcohol and reading his filthy magazines and hiding them under the cushions. Me and my sister would be looking for money to order pizza and we'd go look. He'd lay on the couch and change and money would fall out of his pockets. So we'd go under there and we'd find the magazines. My mom, we'd show them to her and she'd say, put those back. So me and my sister, they're looking at that shit, wondering, what is this shit? You know, so we found a lot of money under that couch cushion, too, so it was What about, it. <laughs> uh, what age, what age were you around this time? All my life. I can't tell you when that started. Did you have any kind of role in the, in the church? No. I hated being in church. I had to go to church, and then I had to go to the church school. My dad gave them a grand piano, instead of giving tuition, so we got to go to, to the school for free. And my mom played the piano for them, or the organ. Everyone in my family is a musician of some kind. My dad used to play the accordion. He gave that up to do his stupid ministry. I guess he didn't find joy in it anymore. A lot of religious people don't find joy in music. Did you have any, any good memories of, of this period? Yes, there was good times also. My dad used to take us fishing, take us to the fair once a year, the Wisconsin State Fair, which was so fun. And the big yellow slide, we'd go over to Mexican Village. That was our favorite. So we'd go to the park on the 4th of July, and my dad would say, hey, let's order a pizza, and they'd deliver it to the middle of the park. 
we say, we're in the big tree over there. Just look over there by the big tree. And the guy brings the pizza and he goes to us in a tree. <laughs> you know, my dad used to take us to bars a lot, which is really weird because he liked to drink socially. And he didn't want to be alone, so he'd take my mom and all of us. We'd sit in a booth and listen to all the cool music people would play in the 70s and 80s. So I was lucky. We weren't allowed to listen to music at home. But when he took us to the bar, we were allowed to listen to music. Is that where you first experienced music like Kiss and stuff like that? Yes. So you hated church, but you like you like hanging out at the bar and listening to uh, the rock I music. I love when he'd take us. He'd take us to the Wrightwood Inn where the Chicago Cubs. It was like their official bar on Wrightwood Avenue. He would take us in there a lot, and we'd order pizza and have soda, root beer, ginger ale, and get to listen to music. So, you know, we didn't care that my dad drank alcohol because of that. Him and my mom would be at the bar, and they'd drink, and we'd get to have a good time. So, there, see, something good came out of that. Were you allowed to listen to that kind of music at home? No. For but some reason, we could watch all the TV we wanted, but we couldn't listen to music. Right. My brother got a spanking for listening to I Want to Hold Your Hand by the Beatles. <laughs> my mom goes upstairs and tells Dad, hey, David's listening to this. Go whip, give him a spanking. But what a hypocrite my father was later in life. When he, after my mom died and he had a girlfriend, he let his girlfriend, he bought her all kinds of CDs and music and everything. So I don't know what was wrong with my dad. He was just a miserable person that I guess he wanted to be an actor and he wanted to be famous. He once ran away to Hollywood and I think he was in his 20s or whatever. Mm -hmm. He wanted to be famous and it didn't work out for him. So I think he took all his frustrations out on us. Did he? My dad did never he... Knew, and he never knew that I wanted to be an actor. He never knew I wanted to be a singer or anything like that. I did all that behind his back. You know, just everyday life, I'd be singing or acting because that's just, that's who I am. Right. So you mentioned that you have a brother and sister. Uh, what's your I have relationship? A brother. My sister died. Oh, well, what happened to your sister? She got killed by a drug dealer in 2016. He was a pimp who was pimping her out, and because she was homeless. My father bred us to be dependent on men, learned helplessness, and because of that, she, as soon as she got on her own and left home, flunked out of college, she ended up homeless, so she had to depend on every man that came along, and nobody wants to help anybody. Imagine being a woman and you're homeless. The only men who are going to come up to you are scumbags and lowlifes. So this fucking lowlife comes up to her, and I've seen the guy, she says, that's Grandpa Ronnie. I said, who's Grandpa Ronnie? And my friend Bob had to tell me, Grandpa Ronnie is a euphemism for pimp. You know, because I was so fucking naive. Or even when I was homeless, you know, I, I wouldn't let no men try to pimp, pimp me out. And they've tried. I've had men come and give me money. Here's some money. I'm like, what's this for? And when this guy tried to give me 100 bucks, I said, you know what? Keep your money. I know where this is leading. So I wasn't like my sister. I Thank God. And she wasn't so strong like that. And... The guy got her on drugs, and she was showing me pictures. He, he was trying to sell her. He was selling her out, and she had this book with all these pictures of her without a, with her shoulders showing and her neck. And I, I thought she was going into modeling, but it wasn't for regular modeling. It was to show the perspective, like John's. And I was really – there was nothing I could do. What am I supposed to do, step up to the guy and say, hey, you fucking Grandpa Ronnie, I'm going to murder you right on the spot? I mean, what, what could I do? My sister – I'm poor, and my sister's poor. My whole family's poor, and when you're poor, you have no power. You can't do a fucking thing about it. You have to watch your own sister waste away on fucking meth and heroin and watch some fucking guys sell her on the street. What can you fucking do? What am I supposed to do, call the police? You think they're going to do anything? They don't care. That's the way the world is. You better have money. And that's why Marilyn Manson, when he was younger, he says, I'm going to have power. I'm not going to end up poor. I'm not going to end up like other people like that. I'm going to have power. That's why he went into music, so that he could become powerful. He went into Freemasonry for the same reason. Did, so uh, I, I admire Marilyn Manson. I want to go his path. That's one of the were, reasons why I love Marilyn Manson so much. Go ahead. Were you close <laughs> to your sister? No. Oh, you weren't? I was not, even, a not, even, not even growing up? or. No, but I tried to be close to her by reading her magazines. My sister was a feminine type of girl, like a girl supposed to be reading 19 magazine and 17. So I would read her magazines. Just I liked reading magazines. When you're young, you want to 
have you want to be interested in what your brother and sister so everything my brother and sister did i was totally interested in i'd read her magazines and i learned how to tie a tie from reading 17 magazine uh, fucking girls high school magazine that's why i learned to tie a tie the episode the issue that on um, brooke shields was in i think that was the one that one stood out when brooke shields was young i remember brooke shields from the very first day she was on 17 the cover of 17 magazine um so you weren't that close so, to her but it does sound like you were still affected by her death right yeah, I was try I tried to be really close, but I cared. Or? Let's put it this way: I cared about my brother and sister ten times more than they ever cared about me. They thought it was weird because I was in the comic books and I was gothic and just all around weird. I wouldn't sit there talking about boys and makeup and shit like that. I, I was a weird, weird motherfucking kid. I, I just nobody wanted to be around me. They thought I was fucked up in the head, and maybe I was. I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm an entertainer. Well, I'm an entertainer because of that. Maybe, yeah, I don't know if that weirdness, I guess it's a bad thing because in a normal world, you're supposed to fit in. And if you don't, they punish you for it. And so. <clears throat> what is your relationship you know, like with your brother? We don't talk. He lives in Florida, Pensacola. He's divorced. His wife left him after the kids got older. All his kids are over 20. They're older now, but they don't talk to me either. I have a nephew and three nieces. They live in Guam. They were in the military, you know, some of them were. But the last correspondence I had was with my niece, Darla, and she told me I was an abomination. She wrote it to me in an email. You're an abomination. You're not supposed to be transgender. God, don't make mistakes. I said, you better talk to God then, because God made me the way I am. I can't help the way I was born. So they're very religious still? Very. Extremely okay. fundamental Baptist. Fundamental is the core, you know, that's the worst word in the English language. And um, your brother as well, right? He's very re religious? Oh, yeah. Extremely. He has a website. I don't know if I should tell you it, but... Well, you don't have to say the, the name. I'll tell, it, I'll tell it to you if you want to know. No, well, because that way you're not really given out a name or anything like that we can talk more freely my brother's name is out there he's on kiwi farms actually i, I even you know what I actually went in kiwi farms i didn't even know what it was and i doxed myself just because my brother claimed that i wasn't a lot he claimed that I didn't exist i don't have any sisters well bullshit david john stewart indeed does have two sisters one of which is dead i also have a brother who died of down syndrome in 1973 so when did you have this falling out with your brother? Oh, well, it was all my life, but I finally moved out of the house. It, it was 2002. It's about 20 years. Okay. Um, let me ask you. Yeah. Yeah, I had to cut my hair short. Look at that. <laughs> so I couldn't take care of it. <laughs> <clears throat> so... Uh, at what point do you leave your your house? You know, the family, you know, your parents, your brother and sister, where you were living. At what point do you go out on your own and, and leave? What do you mean do I leave? I haven't left my apartment in a month. I've been so sick. No, no, I'm talking about we're going back to when, you know, your mom and dad were there, you and your brother and sister were living. talking about the past. There. You're yeah, asking yeah. me when I moved out of my parents' house. Right, right, yeah. When I was 32 years old, after my brother gave him the house, he threw me out of the house. Oh, That's so you, li you lived with your parents till you were 32? Well, my parents till I was 18, and they moved out and gave the house to my brother, and it was his house. But my dad was still a boss, and he gave the bro my brother the house while I was still alive, so he wouldn't have to leave it in a will to be taxed when you you're dead, you know, to avoid right. the taxes. And so I was under my brother's thumb and my dad's thumb. It was a double misery for me. And my brother's wife, who was a fucking psycho, a former witch indeed. So you you and your brother, and did he have his kids then? Yeah. And my brother, they're... I want to mention, he was married to a former witch who was in a coven 
who was involved in child sacrifice. She says, oh, I'm a Christian now. I'm saved. I left that lifestyle. You know what? You never leave being a, a witch. They put a bounty on your head. So all these things she did when I was living there, the way she'd write sigils and leave vowels out of sentences. You know what? She claims she's a Christian. But then I, when I learned about witchcraft after I moved out of the house that days later, because I'm slow to learn things, I always said a witch is just someone who puts a hat on and rides a broomstick bullshit. What I learned, you know, that she used to do, you know, she never left that shit. I, I, I wonder if when my brother went to work or when he wasn't in the house and she wasn't teaching her kids witchcraft and all that. So she can never say anything to me about my lifestyle or the way I live, considering what she's, she was involved with in high school. Right. So it, it's all of you living in a house and, uh, you did you get married at some point what was that did you get married at some point not really married it was more like a common law situation and then i found out illinois doesn't recognize common law marriage so it wasn't a real marriage but you i had to pretend i had to pretend it was a marriage in order to live with him because he's catholic and very uh, observant so, and that turned, it turned out he was married to someone else, still married at this time for 30 years, married to somebody else. How did and, you meet, how did you meet him? And I left him because he got too abusive and I, I, that was an excuse I got to leave him. How did I meet him? At some gay fashion swap. It was called a clothing swap. Mm -hmm. It was at um, the center on Halstead in Chicago. And about how old were you at this point? Uh, let's see. Well, it was, I was about 46. Okay. So, and, uh, you, you had already left, uh, your brother or your, your childhood home at that point, right? Oh yeah. Long, okay. So you, was long you, you, you left, it sounded like you said you left, uh, your childhood home at 32. So at that point, yeah. what, what did you leave for? Or what did you do? I went to Florida and I lived with People. I had roommates. I lived with this na lady named Nancy, and she had a really cool son named Kelly. And I used to hang out with him and her. And we'd go to the, we'd go to all kinds of cool places in San Augustin, Florida. And it was great for a while. But then I, I would move away again and go back to Chicago. And I'd go back and forth. And at the time, my friend Bob, who he was helping me financially, so I was able to go back and forth between Chicago and Florida. I was never happy there. I was never really happy here, either place. Uh, truth is, I'm gonna go to Los Angeles. I think I would be happier there. The weather, the people. I visited a month ago and I really loved it. It was oh, yeah, unlike definitely. Florida, it was unlike Chicago. It's, it's get People look at me like I'm just an everyday average person because in California, everybody's Hollywood minded. Everybody thinks everybody's a rock star, a movie star, a celebrity, or entertainer of some kind. So you know what? I fit right in there. That doesn't work here in Chicago, and it certainly don't work in Florida. Down south, where they stop, the sheriff will stop and talk to you as soon as you get to town. But let me see your ID. What is your intention here? So, you know, I finally found a place that I feel comfortable in, and I'm trying my damnedest to get over there. But, yeah, I spent 10 years off and on in Key West, Florida, St. Augustine, Florida, Fort Myers, Fort Myers Beach. I Did had you employment go... the entire time I was in Florida. I want to stress that. My brother always said I was a bum who never worked. I worked as much as I could or I wouldn't have Social Security today. I paid into that. That's not welfare. And I, even after that, I, I, every time I went to Florida, I always had a job. Did you go to Florida because your father was there? No. My father was always in Chicago. Oh, I thought he was in no, my father lived in Sterling, Illinois. He's dead now, so I'm not oh, doxing okay. anyone. I, I guess I misunderstood. Um, so how? Okay. Did, why, why exactly did you move to Florida? How did you meet this person that you... I liked, well, the person I met was in Chicago, wasn't in Florida. I didn't meet <coughs> him until like 2014. And so I had a lot of time alone. I had a friend named Bob who stayed in Chicago, but he'd send me money so I could pay my bills and my rent and all that. You know, it was before I got on the... But when you left when you left your home at 32, you went to Florida, right? 
Yeah, I went to St. Augustine, Florida. My and then like, why like did I you said, go? Hey, you went there to live. Friendship with somebody. So I went there to live, and I liked the palm trees, the weather. But then it was really too hot there and too humid, and was you have to somebody, be able to drive to get around. Was this somebody that you knew from Chicago, or did you meet them online or something? Or no? How did you? I took a vacation to Florida, and I met this lady, and she liked that I was an artist, and she was into actors and artists. And creative people so that impressed her so it was cool she let me live with her i didn't even have to pay her rent no nothing weird happened she wasn't gay or anything like that okay so um you had mentioned earlier that when you were younger that you were a tomboy and you are yeah you were born a female you now live as a uh as a male Born mostly female, but I was born intersex, actually, and the doctors removed the tiny penis. You know, it's better; it's easier to remove something than to add, if you know what I mean. So, if a baby was born with both, they usually just made it a girl. So you were born you with doctors you, work. Yeah, you were born with both genitalia. Yeah, they... I, I even have. I, I was born with, with, with. I even had like um, female reproductive reproductive parts, you know, ovary and ovaries and the uterus. And I also have um, a prostate. The doctor, I had to go to the hospital three years ago because I was having pain in my left side and they said that my prostate was okay. And I said, what do you mean prostate? I never knew I had a prostate. So because of that, it also cemented the fact that I was born both genders. I went to the birth hospital where I was born and I asked him about it too because I was having sex with someone when I was in Key West, Florida in 2012. He says, it looks like you had surgery down there. I'm like, what are you talking about? He says, it looks like you had surgery, like it was something cut off. So I also asked about that and they said that I was most likely born hermaphrodite, which they call intersex today. And being told I have that... Did, did you have cemented it? Women did, don't have prostates. Did you have periods though? Yep. I was raised a female. I had female parts. I had breasts. I mean, according to some people, they said I was actually attractive, but I never felt attractive. Most women are not comfortable in their own bodies. Even beautiful women. Women are taught in this country to feel like shit. They see the magazines. They see on TV. They see. They get this message all the time since they're little girls that you have to look a certain way or you're nothing. And even then, they don't feel comfortable. I never felt comfortable as a female. I mean, I actually had nice boobs. They were huge, and they were nice, too. And I cut per perfectly good boobs off. People think I'm fucking nuts for doing that. Maybe I am. But the thing is, I don't, re I don't regret it. I'm like, I like the way my clothes hit me now, and I feel comfortable. Although I'm not comfortable with the fact that the doctor, he cut the nipples off. He didn't ask if I wanted to keep the nipples. He, he just cut them right off. There's no nipples. He says, well, guys don't like nipples. I said, that's not the point. Men have nipples. So what kind of fucking doctor does a thing like that? Well, let's get back. We'll get back. We'll get to that point. I want to go a little bit more into that. But uh, so you're, you, you said earlier you were a tomboy growing up. So were yeah. you, did you feel like did you feel like a boy at that point? Were you attracted to women? Never. I always liked guys. I don't know if that's because I was bred to. Right. <laughs> Do you want to take a break for a second? What was that? Do you want to take a break for a second? No, it's okay. Yeah, I just got to have you sit down there so we can see you. But if you want to take a break and walk around, that's fine. I have a little bad headache, though, so i got to take my hat off. Okay. I didn't take my headache medicine. My seizure medication actually keeps me from having seizures. Because my headaches every day are so bad, I'll have a seizure if I don't take this medication in time. And I didn't take it because if I take that medicine within a half hour, I'm in bed. I'm bedridden 20, 20 hours a day now because my medications make me so tired and drowsy they put me to sleep so yeah i need a, a minute here yeah no problem take your time yeah but 
but I'm going to take my medicine now because I'm in danger of having a seizure. That's fine. To that point. It's Imitrex, just for migraines. Just let me know whenever you're ready to uh, proceed. I one time had a seizure when I was with my friend Bob because I wouldn't take the medicine for the same reason. I didn't want it to put me to sleep. I ended up having a seizure. It was a bad one. Okay, hold on. My medicine, I mean my medicine, my makeup came off. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we could like do this later, but you're so you're already made up, so I want to get this done. You know, like. Oh yeah, I'll finish this. You know, you, you know, I appreciate that you helped me out and all. And yeah, it is. It's fine. Thing. I mean, we could like do it. I mean, we could do it anytime, really. I just want to get this done by the end of the month, but I think you would you have, you would have to get tonight. back into the same clothes and all that. You know what I mean? I think you should finish it tonight. I can do this it's, since it's so. We were able to fix the problem, and I'm glad it wasn't. Yeah, that's no it was big deal. For I tried to sign in the stream yard, and it wanted me to connect to my new YouTube account. And it says we want access to control your YouTube, and all I had to I saw that, and I said, "There's no fucking way in hell. I am never attaching stream yard to my my new YouTube account. That's my baby. Nothing's nothing's getting connected to that. If I do live videos, it'll be straight through YouTube, not through fucking stream yard." StreamYard's ready, getting a bad um, rap, you know. Listen up, StreamYard. Stop this crap now. <laughs> are you ready to proceed? Yeah. Okay, so you never you never really liked uh, girls, I guess? You're mostly attracted to men? Not like that, no. I was never interested in girls. Did you, uh, did you ever have a relationship with a woman? No, not like that. Friendship, that's about it. Okay. So you go to Florida... And I had a how, girl who was interested in me in high school. Her name was Maureen. I won't say her last name. Um, and I don't know if she's transgender today, but I know at the time she was lesbian, and she was way into me since high school, all through college, and we'd hang out. But I, but she, I was the first person she told that she outed herself to, and my family saw the way she would dress in her leather jacket and with the handcuffs and shit on it, and all. It looked like BDSM. My my brother told my dad, and they said that I couldn't hang out with her anymore. She thought I was judging her, so she stopped being my friend over that. I had to choose my family over her because I needed a place to live. So okay. Maureen is out there. I want her to know that I didn't have anything against her. I'm sorry that I had to choose survival. I had to choose having a comfortable place to sleep at night and a roof over my head. I was in my 20s then, you know, and I, I didn't know anything about living on my own. I tried a few times. I ran away from home when I was 26, and then again when I was 30. I ended up having to come back again. I tried to live on my own, and I failed. I didn't know how to get an apartment. I didn't know how to do anything. I, I've never gone to clubs. I've never gone to concerts. I went to my first concert in 2011. It was a KISS concert to let you know how controlled I was by my family. Mm. I never even had a desire to sneak out and go to a concert under their nose because I always had to be home by the time it was dark outside, nine o'clock, you know, when I went to college, even I had to go to Columbia College downtown, a commuter college. They ruined my college experience too. They make they would make me. They'd say, "Well, what time is your class? What time's your class over?" And they would calculate how long it would take to get home on the bus or train, given traffic and all. And I had to be home at a certain time, otherwise I got in trouble. Getting in trouble in my house meant a lot of bad things. I don't want to. I don't know. Um, so you you're living you're living with this lady in Florida. How long were you in Florida for? Off and on for like ten years. And you're coming back to Chicago, and I guess you're staying with your brother. Every two years, it seems like I'd come back to Chicago, and then every two years, I'd go back to Florida, thinking it would be better the sec second or third or fourth time, and it wasn't. But every time you come back, I, you're you're still living with your brother at that time. Yeah, and but you're already. That, you're I, I, already I at that point about. alienated with him, right? Yeah. I was but he let, he let you. One. I've never been in good terms with my family, even when I lived at home, not even as a kid. But, I mean, he would let you stay there, so he must have cared about you in I some way. I had to pay right? rent, but I had to pay him rent, my okay. brother. My friend didn't make me pay rent in Florida, but I had to pay my brother 500 a month to stay. 
One time so, he got mad and came downstairs and turned off my heat, my utilities. Then he started getting violent towards me. He took the telephone cord and he, he threw the phone at me. And he, what an asshole. Hmm. Did, He'd um, search my apartment every time I'd leave. Alice would go downstairs. His wife, Alice, would go downstairs and bring the kids down there and they'd eat chicken bones and leave chicken bones and garbage and food all over the floor. Letting her, she'd let her kids wipe their hands all over my bed, my bedspread, all over my stuff, and break all my stuff. I mean, these people are the most selfish fucking lowlifes God ever made. It says a lot about their fucking God and their stupid religion, what they believe in. If they would treat someone like that, I'm going. I'm actually having a job and going to work at the planetarium, and then having to come home wondering if all my stuff will be in the garbage can or thrown about the house with chicken bones everywhere. She'd take the key and go down there and search. As if she saw something new down there, she'd say, oh, you you were talking to dad, weren't you? Like, like she has a, has a right to tell me to talk to my own father. Was the I chicken... No freedom. They'd was, open my was, mail. I wasn't allowed to open my mail. Was the chicken bones part of the witchcraft stuff? No. They oh, were just pigs. They were garbage. gypsies. His wife was a gypsy. He married like this hillbilly gypsy type of woman. She'd throw her garbage out the fucking window. She was so lazy. She'd take the diaper with the piss and shit in it and throw it out the fucking side of the window. That's how scared she was of my brother because he would always be yelling at her, Alice, get over here. I need you to do this. I need you to do that. And she'd get so frustrated, she'd throw the garbage out the window to please that fucker. My brother was a fucking tyrant. You know what? They both deserved each other. I don't feel sorry for her. I don't feel sorry for him. She hated his music. He hated her because she'd disappear every time he'd whip out his steel guitar. I appreciated his music. Everything my brother did musically, he doesn't know it, but I appreciated it. And I tried to learn. I'd watch his hands as he, you know, play. And I, I didn't understand how to play a guitar until like two years ago. <clears throat> now I can appreciate my brother's music even more because I know how to play a guitar now. I, it's opened up such a good, great world for me, just learning how to play a guitar. <clears throat> it's one of the most positive things I've ever done in my life. I wish I would have did it 30 years ago. I wish I would have said, Dave, please teach me how to play the guitar. I could have learned so much from him. All he had to say was, here, put your fingers there. This is to E7 chord. This is the E minor, A minor, you know. I didn't know that shit. I, I thought you had to be real super smart to play a guitar, that you had to know, like, hundreds of chords. I didn't even know what a chord was. But then my friend Laura taught me. And she said, this isn't rocket science. And she says, you just need to know two or three chords. I didn't know how to grasp it. And when she said that, an epiphany opened up in my brain. And now, look at me, I'm a rock star now. I, I'm not the best guitar player. I'm not the best singer. But because of my lifelong ability to be an entertainer, it was very easy for me to put all that together so fast. Right. So... Um... When did you go into the military? Okay, well, I signed up to go into the Marines in 1994, all summer long. I was trying to get in, and they were giving me a hard time. It was really hard. But after about four months, they finally approved my health because I had a lot of health issues, so that was what was stumbling me. They finally let me in, and I wasn't supposed to go until after Christmas, but then the recruiter says well we need you to go in now it was november and it pissed my father off because i wouldn't be able to celebrate christmas with the family and for me to leave before christmas pissed him off so we all got together and had like this big dinner but then my dad proceeded to humiliate me and yell at me throughout the dinner and i said you know what i'm glad i'm going to the marines tomorrow i hope i never see you guys again i was in there for six weeks in boot camp to have three phases. I was in phase one. I never made it to phase two or phase three, which is where you do all the uh, running around and uh, what do you call that? The, the fart lick course or whatever, where you climb up things and you crawl under things. And How did they treat you there? Like, like the military treats you like crap. So they were like kind of pissed that you weren't, you know, going on to phase two. Oh, you two. mean my part of my family treat me or the military? Oh, the military. Because, I mean, you said you only got to phase one, so are the they like screaming at like you? Like... like, Well, I treated everyone like crap. They didn't treat me any worse than anyone else. 
Um, can you hold out a sec? I can't breathe. I need to take my brain. Yeah, no problem. I can't breathe. Yeah, just, uh, you know. When I talk, I can't breathe. I have trouble breathing. I can't breathe out my nose. Oh, I'm sorry. This is why I won't talk on the phone with people anymore. Yeah, that's cool. You we not can to just... mention I, I lost ninety percent of my hearing. Oh okay. man. I'm not a hypochondriac, I'm just a fucking old fuck that's falling apart. Yeah, it's not it's not a problem. Whenever you're ready uh to proceed, just let me know. I have a lot of pressure in my head. I don't know if I can continue. Hold on. It is starting to become very hard for me to do this. I don't know how much more I can do. But I'll try. Finish. So you were discharged from the military, right? Or did you yeah. quit? I quit. Okay. I'm a they, quitter. And they, and they released you? Like they gave you that release and all that? Yeah. They gave me entry level separation on my DD2. What is it called? DD214. It's a form when you get discharged. It's not dishonorable. It's not honorable. It's just general. What do you call it? And, entry level separation. <clears throat> Let me it's ask you. It's in my this. old name, too. People are like, oh, you weren't in there. You can't prove it. Well, it's in my old name. If you know, if I've been doxxed. You know my old name. You know to look under that name. Well, let me ask you something. Um, there is some stuff floating around I wanted to ask you about. Uh, there is a mugshot that said you were arrested for possession of meth. Do you, are you That's okay to talk? True. I was, that, that mugshot was on mugshots.com. I was arrested in 2008 for shoplifting at Walmart. Okay, so somebody I changed it. I had, the, I had the file expunged, so the file doesn't exist anymore. Okay. And that fake police report that people are putting, and they're writing on there, and equally crazy is David Stewart. What police report says an equally crazy? Right there, you know, that was a f fudged up police report. But the actual police report, that one was from 2010. When I took my fist and put it in some woman's face, I was a woman at the time, by the way. She grabbed for my eyes with a dirty, nasty cigarette stained hillbilly nails and she's cussing me out because i wouldn't give her money she was one of those people in the street can i have some money do you have any money help me out and i made the mistake of saying fuck you to her and you don't say that to people in the street so she called me on my bullshit by me saying fuck you to her she ended up chasing me down the street and right in front of a, a cta bus she, i was going to get on the bus and a driver slammed the door so i couldn't get on to safety and I ended up getting trapped between the bus and her. So I took my pepper spray, the, the one called the, the, the Spitfire one, and that's the one that shoots out like a cone. They don't sell it anymore, I guess, because it works too good. I looked it up today on the Internet, and I saw that you can't get that anywhere anymore. But it saved my life. And then I punched her in the face three times. I said, leave me alone. And when I went to run across the street, there were some city workers, and they called the police, and they said, oh, She's got a knife, and they thought I had a knife. And the cop was like, where's the knife? I said, there's no knife. It's pepper spray here. And I totally, like, obeyed the police and everything, and they let me go. And by the time when I went to court, the woman showed up, and she was screaming and yelling and fighting with the district attorney and everything. They were only trying to help her. She's like, I want money. I want money out of this. And he says, well, she's on Social Security. She's poor. What are you going to get? And so she pissed off. The state's attorney so much that the judge actually got mad and said, I could see why she punched you in the face. You know, I was a she still, so that's why I'm using that pronoun. I could see why she pushed, punched you in the face. And she's, the judge says, I'm just going to give you six months supervision. You behave yourself. You won't hear any more from us. And, of course, you know, no more trouble. So I've right. only gotten in trouble twice in my life with the law, shoplifting and punching someone in the face. 2008. The bug shot is from 2008 from Florida, and that was acne. That was not math. Look at me. Does, does this look like the face 53 years old? Someone who uses math? People usually use math can't stop, and they end up, the face, face becomes really skinny and gaunt. 
and their bones disappear. That's what happened to my sister. I saw her and she was, my sister saw her one time and ran into her in the street. She, she was 68 pounds, a full grown fucking adult. Five foot seven, 60 fucking eight pounds mm. or something like that. That's what meth does to people. That's what heroin does. Well, but let I, me ask. I, I'm let me ask. Pot, but that's it. Let me ask you about the shoplifting charge. How did that happen? Like, why were why were you I shoplifting? shoplifting? Pizzas. I tried to also steal a DVD, a Kiss DVD, and a South Park DVD. And let me tell you about stealing from big box corporations like Target and Walmart. There is a lawyer in Orlando, it's called the Palmer Recovery Group. And if you steal and you get caught, not, not only whether you get arrested or not doesn't matter, when you have to sign a paper, they don't release you from the store. So the loss prevention gets your name and address and sends it to the lawyer. Guess what? You're paying something called a civil remedy. That means for the time that the object was off the shelf, that you took it off the shelf and it was unavailable for sale, you kept the store from making money. So the lawyer gets the money that way for the company. They make a lot of money for each 10 shoplifters to get away. That one shoplifter lifter that does get caught, guess what? You're paying the Palmer Recovery Group. $300, and if you blow it off the next month, it's $475, and so on. They'll sue you. They'll ruin your credit over that. I have good credit, so you know what? I paid them as soon as they said, hey, you, you owe us money. And I wrote an apology letter. I said, you know what? I could see it's great that, they, that these companies have somebody like you to protect them from thieves because I'm just like somebody who stole out of desperation, but there's professional thieves out there stealing hundreds of thousands of dollars of shit every day. And it's because of them that they have to be so strict when someone like me steals, you know. So, so I'm not never, sorry I stole, but I am star sorry I got caught. So I you've never you've never done any drugs oh. ever? You've never nope, even, not, even I'm, tried? I'm not, unfortunately, I'm not cool. I can't say I did drugs. You know, a lot of rock stars say, yeah, I'm a rock star. You know, if I really wanted the rock star image, I'd be up in here telling you that I smoke drugs and put cocaine up my nose and... I put cocaine on my cornflakes. In fact, I'm going to meet my connection now. So, you know, I mean, I should lie and say I do drugs because it would like make me look like a badass. But then there's kids out there, they might look up to me and they say, well, if you use heroin and meth, I can do it too. So, you know, I, I don't put that shit in there. First of all, it's nasty. Two, I have health problems and I don't want to feel worse than I already do. It's a waste of money. If I have money, 20 bucks to spend on drugs, I'm going to go buy a comic book with it or food, a fucking beef sandwich, french fries, and hot dog and cheeseburger. I ain't going to waste it on no damn crack rock. A good cheeseburger and french fries, that's my drug. <laughs> I'm, so I'm when, a jughead from the Archie <clears throat> Comics. <laughs> so when do you meet the, um, when do you meet the, uh, you, the, the guy that you married? You mean Mary, quote unquote. Or, I met yeah. him in 2000, 2014 in Chicago at the clothing swap. Yeah, oh yeah, that's right. And then you moved in with uh, him, he I was guess? Wearing, this guy was four foot six when I met him, and now he's only about five foot six. He shrunk, I should be saying she, because she goes by the female gender. She's transgender, male to female. So when I met her, she was wearing these fucking high heels, a fucking women's get up. A fucking wig. I mean, and it didn't even look right like it usually doesn't with a lot of older transgender because she's 60 years old today. So you, you understand. You weren't, uh, you weren't transgender at that point, right? That, no, I, I met her because I started to be transgender. I wasn't oh, like aware of... I always heard about sex change and I never understood what that was. You know, I was so fucking naive. I it's kind of, it's still kind of like a... 16. So, it's still kind of like a cisgender hetero relationship, right? Like it's a man and a woman, but you guys have female. swapped. It was a male female relationship. Male female relationship between yes. Yeah, and you were the man, and they were the woman. So, so we wanted to be anyway, but it was more like I grew up as a female, so I still had the female submissive personality. And my friend had the male dominant personality because she also comes from incredible wealth and money and her family's like in a one percent wealth bracket oh, yeah. and um she's disabled so she's like the poor person in the family but she still got the, the connections the family and all that so they didn't like that we were living together we did it in secret 
And even how to long, this day, her mother's trying to get us from being friends. How long were you married? Just nine months. Okay. And then, like, what caused you to leave that situation? Well, first of all, being beaten, abused, and I, I had a caseworker, luckily, from a different agency who got me a voucher because um, they said they considered me a veteran, even though I was only in boot camp six weeks, and also because I was in a domestic violence situation. Those two reasons alone, at the timing, it just happened to be right, and I got a voucher to get a Section 8 to get a um, Section 8 is not regular government housing, by the way. Section 8 gives you a paper called a voucher, and you can live. You could choose any landlord that participates. And now they're not supposed to discriminate at all. All landlords are supposed to participate, but they always try to find reasons around it because a lot of the voucher holders are on drugs or their kids or grandkids are. So a lot of landlords are reluctant. But my landlord, he, he liked me on the spot, and I was able to find a private landlord. My credit's good. Give the paperwork inspection, rent determination, then you get your apartment. So you, you see the inside, you see my apartment here, you see how nice it is, that's, that's section eight. You have a choice. If you're lucky enough to get a voucher, it, it's considered a golden ticket. Some people, they have to be on a lottery for decades before if they even get lucky to get chosen. I think lottery systems are bullshit. I think when you apply for something, you should be able to put your name on a list and be chosen at a certain time, you know, not, not this choosing someone who just came that across the three months that they get out and then somebody else is waiting 10 years, you know, that's not fair, really. They, they should make the system a little more fair. So, so at this point, yeah. this, this is like literally the first time at this point that you're on your own. And what age is that? Well, I've been on my own since, let's see, since I left at 2002, I've been on my own whether I lived with someone or had a room and I was still technically on my own, but if you mean like on my own, on my own, living on my own, when I got the voucher in, in 2016, it was the first time I got to live on my own without having somebody live with me. Okay. So, um, at one point yeah. you were attacked during the uh, Cubs uh, World Series celebration? Yeah, in 2016, I was coming home on a Addison Street bus, and this guy kept sitting forward like this and breathing on my neck, and I was sitting in front of him on the seats on the bus, and I, I kept looking back. He says, what the fuck are you looking at? I said, shut up, you fucking Cubs fan. That's all it took. He took his big, giant, meaty hand and cracked me across the head and knocked me out. I was in a coma for six days. What were your injuries? Concussion, he knocked me out. Was there, there any kind of... Fell below. I mean, this was a big Italian guy. He had big, strong, meaty hands. The guy was at least six foot four. So when you woke up from that, uh, was I collapsed. There... My, I just collapsed because whatever he did, it caused my spine to collapse, and I, black, I blacked out. Oh, no, I can't and... breathe. Hold on. Okay, no problem. Hold on. I'll stop making up stuff. Something keeps fucking going across my stove. What the hell is this damn thing? I can't fucking even breathe anymore. My quality of life is going down. My will to live is going down. I think everything will get better. I don't. It's been over a month. It's been 28 days now. Um, my lungs are still quivering. Mm. You know, quivering means like when somebody's sitting on your chest and they're playing it like a fucking accordion. Right. I can't sing anymore because of it. Yeah, that's horrible. My career is over. I got to be famous for a year and a half. I don't get to be... Well, I guess I'll always be famous, but I don't get to like do music anymore you can hear that i can barely talk they said i had the lung capacity of an infant when i was in the hospital they said your lungs never grew but they're, they're actually very, like really tiny like this you have infant lungs yes 
Hmm. I've always had problems with my lungs, always breathing problems and chronic bronchitis. I was born with because my mom used to smoke when she was pregnant with me. And after secondhand smoke up until she died when I was 31. Okay, so after, so she after died you from were... emphysema, she had, she had emphysema, she died from that. Right, so after um, you were attacked by this guy, you were in the hospital, uh, you woke up from the coma, uh, was there any lingering after effects from the attack? Permanent neurological damage. PTSD, I have a violent psychotic temper because of what he did. I already okay. kind of had problems with anger before my because of my family, but that that clinched it. Now when I get in a bus, if I do it all anymore, I sit in the side seats in the front of the bus. I don't let no one sit behind me. So I haven't been beaten up since then. Um, There's a bunch of angry fucking scumbags on a bus. Most of the people on there are mentally ill pieces of shit and commoners. Someone like me should be going on a bus in the car. I'm wearing my costume and my makeup and I have my guitar and they're already trying to beat me up because I'm different. So now I take Ubers all the time. So at what point do you decide that you want to be a singer? All my life. But I mean, when you started pursuing the Minnie Manson persona, were you already about on the internet at this point? Yeah, about a year and a half ago. I was never into social media at all. And okay, so, so what, what, how ago. did that, how did that come about? How did you, how did this fascination with Marilyn Manson start? When he came to Chicago, he was with Kanye West and they did, you know, at Soldier Field, they had that little house there and rumor has it the house is still there and the Bears just run around it when they're playing football. But oh no, they had a, what do you call, Danda the first Donda, and he was standing on a porch wearing a really nice Hugo Boss coat and looking all handsome. I'm like, damn, this guy's, I've always heard about Marilyn Manson. I didn't like his 1990s persona, but then I'm seeing this well-dressed, sexy older man, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I become intrigued. So I guess because I was looking up Donda, YouTube was sending me, you know how they send you suggestions and you get videos that are suggested to you? So they sent me Kill for Me, and I watched it, and it, that's it. I was totally hooked when I saw Kill for Me. I said, it's like he wrote that song for me. Because I used to walk around saying, kill, 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 because of the Marines. They, in boot camp, they tell you to say kill all the time. Kill! So I had to start saying kiss, because I was yelling kill. You know, like I had Tourette's or something, I'd be out in the street or with my friend or whatever, and I'd be like, kill, and people get scared. So I started saying, kiss. That's where kiss came from, by the way. So you have, the, kill. you have this earlier, oh. you have this earlier desire to be a singer. Then uh -huh. you see Marilyn Manson yeah. at the Donda show. Uh, and I, I, I guess. I saw it on the video. Yeah. You decide to start doing an impersonator act or what not overnight what? I, I don't know what happened just slowly it happened i saw kill 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 for me and like i said it's like that spoke to me and I you were learning you that video bill you directed that video by the way he's a good guy i've actually communicated with him and i told him that's a great video and he liked that i said that you know he did a very good job on that and it totally it had an effect on me so much that I made my probably my third video that I made. I took my phone and I was spinning around with my Xbox on. I have music in it. I didn't even have or even know they had karaoke or anything like that. So I was just playing Kill for Me on my Xbox and spinning around and I was singing parts of the song. And that's Music Biz Marty saw that and he put me on his show. It was the first time that anyone ever interviewed me as like what would you call a professional entertainer and that's where it kind of took off okay and then at that point did you get on the internet or did somebody tell you that you should take this to took the a internet while. or i was already like in youtube that was my only chat like my only social media so you were like posting youtube videos yeah i make like one or two a month in the first three months but after that after I got interviewed, I started, I didn't, I still didn't have 
the laptop. I only had the phone, so I had limited resources in which to play music and record at the same time. And I would go from the laptop to the computer, and I discovered the phone actually has better optics, more detail. Like what you're seeing now is being filmed on my phone by Galaxy, the flip phone, you know, um, not an iPhone. What do they call that? Uh, yeah, the uh, Galaxy Android. Flip phone. Android. Right. So, yeah, I use an Android, and it, it films much better than the computer. So you're so doing... So I use a computer. Now I, I pay $50 extra a month of, to pay for the Internet just so I could look at the karaoke. You'd see the words on the screen while the phone films it. So that's primarily how my videos get done. Okay, so um, you're doing this YouTube uh, channel. Were you getting a lot of views? Not at first. Um, then I was told to go on Discord. Pat Awful actually was the one they taught me to do Discord, and I really stunk at it at first. I could never get my audio to work because the way you hook your audio up with Discord is different than how you do it on StreamYard. Just like we couldn't get into this... I couldn't get onto this, my mic and my audio and my video was disabled because I tried to enter through Instagram. And maybe the people at Instagram need to know about that because people cannot click a link and use, but when you send it to my email, the link immediately worked. Camera fine, mic fine, everything fine. So right. people that create and do marketing for social media apps, and they're going to see this interview and they're going to want to know. They, that's called feedback. I did a lot of market research for companies, testing products and things like that. So I'm kind of like up on that. So if they're listening, maybe so, they can fix that. So uh, how did you come in contact with Pod Awful? They contacted me. Jesse contacted me literally four days after I was on Marty's show. So Who's Marty can lay claims to discovering me. Music biz Marty. Okay. Pot also didn't discover me. Marty did. I want to make that clear. But Pot also did a lot of good for me too. Even though they thought I was, I'm just a low cow. They they have a different term for it. I forgot what they call it. Goo goons or something like that. goon. I think they call it a goon. And they started getting all possessive of me and. I didn't feel like I was being promoted the way I should, so I kind of broke away from them. I don't know. But I have to give Jesse credit, too. He gave me a lot of air time. And because of that, I played into the low cow thing, and I said, I'm going to take advantage of this. So I basically kind of talked him into letting me do whole shows and everything. When at first, the first time on this, I was on his show, I, he was doing, a, he was still talking to Marilyn Manson, and I was just in a segment of it, but when he was trashing Russian people and he wanted me to trash Russian people, I refused. And not only did I refuse, I actually started speaking Russian, which he didn't know I could do, because I, I, I hope they have a lot of Russian fans soon, you know. Strasvutya tavarish, kakvasvut, astrojna, rugiver. You know, I know phrases. I am not fluent, but I know enough. It's got me out of a lot of trouble in my life, too. It's helped me to know. Knowing a foreign language, knowledge is power. It is true. So, so you um, think that basically your time with Pod Awful was a good experience? Good and bad. Like I said, that first episode, though, you know, he, he claims he knows Marilyn Manson, but then Marilyn Manson blocked him a week later and on social media. And maybe his behavior is why, you know, if, it's, if he's telling the truth. He says he knows Kanye West, you know. Not their friends, you know. People know people, so you never know. People are always tell me, ah, oh, he doesn't know anybody, but I think he does. He's, he's pretty smart. He's very, Jesse's very creative. He's very intelligent. I mean, his graphics are phenomenal. So, you know, he, he knows that I care about him, but he also knows I'm very headstrong like he is, and I kind of like to be my own boss. I don't like to be told I'm a slave, that I am belongs to somebody. Nobody signed me. If I belong to a record label and they sign me, that's a different story, but nobody has to this point. I've had record labels like 
use my work for free and try to exploit me, but none, none of them ever wanted to sign me and pay me. How did they, how did record label, can you give me an example of a record label exploiting you? Um, do you want me to name the label? Yeah, I mean, if you want to, you can say, we can I don't say know allegedly. If these are real or... record labels, but they've made, you know, anybody, so for, if you make music and you put it on any kind of form of communicative media, like even YouTube, like I put a video on YouTube and I put produce it, I'm a producer. So anybody nowadays can claim to be a producer. So, I mean, it's not like Capitol Records or like Death Row Records. There's some, something called the small label. They, I guess they made somebody named Grant McDonald very rich. He's like a gay cowboy. He sings about gay cowboy stuff. And they're called Yam, Yam Ranch Records. And at first, they was putting up my videos, you know, and making nice videos about me. They did my Who's That Girl video. And I'm really proud of that. Who's that? Who's that girl? By the Eurythmics. Oh, Sweet yeah. Dreams. I did that too. So, you know, like I said, that was before I was doing karaoke. So they took what I did and put music to it. And I liked it. But now the guy complains all the time. He's angry at me because he says that I complain about everything they ask me to do. He's asking me to do obscure things that I'm not able to do, like scat. I'm not good with like the scat, the boobity do, and you know. Cab Calloway stuff. I can't do stuff like that, and my brain isn't fast, so I can't do like rip, rip, rip. How do you say rip hop, hip hop? Yeah, I don't even know what it's called. That's how bad I am. Hmm. Rip hop, hip hop, rap. I'm so dyslexic. After... I have learning disabilities, so I can't do real fast. I know that's good for your brain to do hip hop and rap. By the way, to measure the words quickly like that for young people to start doing that. It's very helpful. I wish I would have did that when I was young, but that didn't exist when I was young. Not until 1989, where they had Run DMC, walk this way, talk this way. You know, that was my first introduction to that. So, uh, so at the end of Pod Awful, did they move away from you, or did you move away from them? Both, and it was both. And, and then I was on a show, and Jesse at the same time said, that's it unsubscribed from Minnie Manson, have nothing to do with Minnie Manson. Most of his followers did, but a few of them still thought that I was pretty interesting and cool. So thank God they, they stayed with me. They, you know, I lost so I my guess... old channel. Literally a month after that happened, I lost my old channel, but it was a blessing. I look at now, every person that subscribes to me now is actually my fan, and they started subscribing to me as Minnie Manson. But the the channel I had first, I had eight years, and I only used primarily to watch Christmas movies, or not even movies, Christmas music, or ASMR music. I wouldn't even use it to listen to rock and roll or anything until like 2016. I was afraid of social media that much. I wouldn't even respond or put comments or anything, or respond to comments. I would just, for like six years that I had it, I used YouTube primarily just to watch videos and not to engage with anybody. That's how scared I was of people. I, I'm, I'm not gonna lie, I'm n not really super social and good with people, but I've gotten more so in the last year and a half because of playing the guitar and singing. Now I talk to dozens of people on Discord and Instagram and Twitter. I've never had that opportunity before. So social media is helpful when you're lonely. Okay. So you get, you're finished with Pod Awful, and I'm guessing during this time you're just doing YouTube videos and going on other kind of shows, and I guess that's when you end up on Kermit and Friends? Yeah, I, I don't even remember how I ended up on Kermit and Friends. Somebody contacted me and said, hey, I want you to go on this show. And what was the experience like in, initially? It was terrible. The first time I went on there, she made fun of me, and I got so enraged, I ended up threatening to kill her. And, of course, I didn't mean it. And I didn't threaten her since. It's not like I kept doing it. It happened once. And she still met with me after that, by the way, in California. So she's not scared of me. People threaten her all the time, you know. That's when yeah, people think, don't threaten you is when you should be worried. I think you're very enter entertaining, but... <laughs> You a little bit. you then came back on her show a few times, right? Yeah. And you eventually 
took her clothes off during the live show to try to get her you banned. Said that when somebody's drinking, I could have choked in my water. <laughs> I'll see you in court. No, I'm kidding. Um, yeah, when you see me drinking, don't say take your clothes off. I could have had an accident there. <laughs> All right. Anyway, I took off my clothes. My clothes is... Now, what drove that? Like, what, what made that happen? Why, why did you do that? I learned it from a friend of mine who likes to, he was porn bombing a lot of people with his big fat body and his, his wiener. So I kind of got the idea from him. I said, Hey, you know what? I don't mind showing my body. My body's sexy and hot and my fans need to see it once in a while. Was and your, I, I'm glad was your... she didn't get in trouble though. I don't listen. I, I'm glad she, she didn't lose her channel because of me. Cause you know, that's very important to her. She uses it to make a living. So. Right. Really and was was happened. your was your intention to for her to lose her channel or did you not even think about that? I didn't think about it honestly. I just kind of in the back of my head I was like, yeah. I was mad because I wanted to get even for the way she humiliated me and then I tried to sing Rainbow Connection and she didn't like it, you know. She was trying to get ratings by treating me bad and She's finding out that that's not working, you know. If you want to have a good guest come back, by the way, she's admitted I, the time she spent with me in California, and I have actually the statement where she said that it was, she said that, she said it was the time I spent with Minnie Manson was the best of my life. Okay, so you did go out eventually uh, to stream with her live in L.A. Um how did that come yeah, about? Yeah, so it was great. The first day was great. But yeah, it came about because I wanted to go to California. I saw a stream she did. She started doing this in real life thing. I seen her walking down the street with two people I was familiar with from Discord. And I'm like, damn, look at how beautiful the streets are. Look, the Hollywood Walk. I, I've always wanted to go to California. I was always afraid that it was so expensive and everything was spread out. And I wouldn't be able to just walk around. But it was off the opposite of what I thought. Everything was close together. Everything I needed was there. My hotel was wonderful. Shout out to the Roosevelt. Yeah, it was fucking awesome. They treated me like a goddamn rock star in the hotel. You know, Did they hang out people, with you off camera, or were you, you just by yourself? And I was on camera the whole time they hung out with me. Elisa, you know, and I didn't like that other guy that hung out. She, she didn't have to bring that creepy guy with. Oh, Billy John? Yeah, she didn't have to bring that guy with. He was, I never felt comfortable around him. And then he started calling me the wrong gender, and that's why I called him F A G O T. Okay, I misspelled that on purpose. All right. But, you know, it's kids stuff. You call names, you know. And so I did, and it just went downhill from there. He's known the fight with everyone, though. And I don't want the show to be about him. All I'm saying is, he threw a banana. I went and got that banana, and it was an awesome banana. And that showed the world what he is and what I am. Well, I think when you're, um, hungry, when you're hungry, you don't turn food down, no matter how it happens. Okay. Right. <laughs> I think I think what a lot of people remember from that stream is your uh, diabetes attack. My stupid diabetes attack when my blood sugar fell. I mean, I had a half a sandwich in my bag. I even had like these, you know, those baked goldfish. But those fucking things were not helping me. They were drying me out. In fact, when you're diabetic, you have to eat good solid meals like eggs and sandwiches and hot meals and we were in the car for like three and a half hours i don't know what the fuck why it took so long for them to get from hollywood all the way to fucking santa monica boulevard it should only took like 40 minutes and it, they just kept driving on and on and she kept talking and i was just getting sick and overwhelmed and frustrated you know how little kids get when they get to just get so fucking frustrated in the car and it just they start crying and screaming and kicking the seat well that's how i felt i can't help the way my emotions are and I'm not going to lie, I'm a little, you know, um, not mature. Fucking Bader's more mature than me. He's a fucking kid. Yeah, I found out about that, too. Anyway, but... um, Did you really think... Did more you... More mature than a 53-year-old. But anyway... um, Did you really think that you were dying at that point? Or were you just using yes. that as an excuse to take No, control? I felt like I was dying because my blood sugar was falling. And it already fell. And you get two... I get two phases where I'll... I get the hunger pangs in my stomach the first time, the growling in the stomach, the hunger. And I, when that happens, I have 15 minutes to 
find food and I didn't say nothing because I kept eating those fish things. But then I had that growling feeling in my stomach again. And all of a sudden I felt my blood sugar fall. I felt it. I felt my energy, like all the bones and everything left my body. And I just slumped like that. And I said, I got to get some food now. We got to get off the highway. Because I had no idea where they were driving and how long it would. So I told her, let's get off the highway. I'm hungry. Let's go get food. And she didn't care. And she made a joke out of it. And as soon as I expressed that I needed, that I had a need, she was able to utilize it in her show and control me to get what she wanted. She made over $3,000 on that show that day because of me. Because I was a whiny, cry, crying little bitch that day. Which is true. It sounded like a whiny little fuck. It cost, cost, probably cost me my career, for all I know. Did she pay it for anything? Primarily, pretty much of it. Did she pay but, for anything? Nope. That first day we went and ate, thank God. we were. We had, I had control her because we were walking around. And we went to this restaurant, and I paid for that, and I tipped the waitress $10. She didn't tip the waitress anything. Somebody else probably paid for a meal on top of it. it no, she didn't pay for nothing. She didn't offer. Mm. And I couldn't offer either because, you know, like I said, I'm not that rich. The only reason I had money to go to California is because of my credit card. I have good credit. All right, well, so... People have all this money. My ex, my ex has all this money, fucking tons of cash, exposable... Ex, what do they call it? An indisposable income where you, they just have so much money all the time. And yet her credit is so bad. She can't get a loan for nothing. And I'm the one who's fucking living on Social Security and food stamps, and I have better credit than most rich people. See, you keep your credit good, and you can do stuff when you want. And credit cards are supposed to be for emergencies only, like dental emergencies or having to take a plane or go to a hotel because they require a credit card, and that's the only reason I got one years ago because I went to see my niece graduate from boot camp. I had the fly to South Carolina, so I was required to get a credit card, and I did. So I've had it for a while, so, you know, I'm going to have to pay that off. It's going to take a while, but it was worth it. So overall, how was your experience with Elisa? Are you cool with her, and you enjoyed uh, yeah. streaming? Yeah, overall, I think she's okay. I, I, I know what she's like, you know, and you, know, you have to take her with, like, a grain of salt. Don't take her too seriously. Don't expect anything from her. Because whether it's her or anyone, if you expect something from somebody, you get disappointed. So it's best to just go with the flow. Like at the first day I was with her, I went with the flow and did whatever she wanted because she didn't say, what do you want to do? She would say, hey, we're going to do this and this and this. But five seconds later, she was like the wind. Her, her mind changes as fast as the wind changes direction. So you can't really depend on her. She says, we're going to go here or do this or do this. She doesn't keep an itinerary. You just have to go like the wind when you're with her. So if you're going to be on her show, remember that people just plan to do it her way. And it's her show. She wants to make money. And if you, if there's any kind of friction, you know, she's going to use it against you. She's not stupid. You know, she uses, she knows how to control and manipulate men really well. I could tell you that. No. Okay, so I, I have was, a... Overall, it was decent, you know, nothing bad happened to me, and I figured out I could take an Uber back to my hotel. It didn't cost $200 like I thought it would. That's why I said I was too poor to go back to my hotel. I thought it was going to be like 200 bucks. Instead of just taking my phone and looking at it and seeing, I just assumed. That's one of my problems from be, for being the age I am. I didn't grow up with technology, and I'm still kind of a retard when it comes to technology. Like when I got lost in a pier, it didn't occur to me. I could just look at the video, the live video that she was streaming to see where she was. It literally took me like a half hour to figure that out. And believe it or not, somebody else had to tell me. Just look on the stream and you'll see where she is. And then by the time I found her, I was so mad. I was playing along and pretending I couldn't see her. You could clearly see me in the background. I, mean, I could hear her a mile away. So you know that I'm telling the truth that I knew where she was. I guess I, I just few... kind of like was so mad then I just wanted to give her a hard time. But then the third day I gave her a run around and that was the funniest video ever. I said I was at the Viper room and I'm at the Viper room. Send me a car. And I made up the story where I was at. I'm in the elevator. I'll be up there in five minutes. I'm in a chicken suit. I'm standing right in front of you. And I thought that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it ended well. 
with humor. Mm. So let me ask you a few more questions and then we can wrap it up. Okay, Um, can I take a break real quick? yeah, no problem. I just want to drink some water and blow my nose. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, I don't like to blow my nose in front of people. That's kind of private. Private. Private parts. Actually, she used to work for uh, Howard Stern. Yeah, I know. If even if Howard Stern even knows I'm alive, he probably thinks I'm a whiny baby too. <laughs> oh wait, I gotta do one more thing. The embarrassing problems you put on my hat. Hmm. It's hat time. Isn't his hat cool? My I don't friend like it. Tall Dark. His name is Tall Dark. He bought this hat for me, so thank you, Tall Dark. I kind of give him a hard time because he had the ghost in a machine on his face, like this effect, and I. Accused him of blackface. I was just fucking with him. I know it's not blackface. So. <laughs> so I, I wanted to ask you, um, so you were on Ripley's Believe It or Not. Is that true? Yeah, it's true. What year was that? 2000. Wait, hold on. Okay, I was on Ripley's Believe It or Not in 2003. I was living in St. Augustine, Florida at the time, so I was right there by the main Ripley's Believe It or Not, where they do a lot of their filming. So I got to be not only on national TV, but I they did a comic strip of my cat, and also, what else was there? Well, why were you on Ripley's Believe It or Not? Was it the cat? What was that? Why were you on Ripley's Believe It or Not? Because I'm a goddamn freak. <laughs> no, because of my cat. <laughs> okay, what was what was weird about your cat? She had a question mark in her fur. All right. So what was their angle? Her tail they was were... white, and there was a question mark on her back. Okay. I've even shaved her fur, and I wanted to see if the pattern would be there, and it was. And no, it's not cruel to shave your cat. Lots of people do that. Right. I never had a problem with fleas again after I learned to do that. And I used to leave the white question mark so it would be like raised up. It was really cool. So how long how long was the segment? Was it a long segment or did they just kind of flash the cat up there or what? It was it was about a two minute segment actually. And if you go on my YouTube channel, you could see in I put it in one of the sections, mini shows, mini friends. It's in one of them, and. You'll see the Ripley's Believe It or Not thing. I actually, in the, when you're looking at all my um, playlists, you'll see the cat there. It's near the probably the last 75% of the show because they have other things they're doing on the show. But this is my channel. This is my sticker. I still have these stickers. I sell them for $5 each. Minnie Manson. Cool. On YouTube. Minnie Manson Star. It's my official YouTube. You type and, in at Minnie Manson Star on YouTube, you'll find it. But it, it's just Minnie Manson. It's the only official channel of Minnie Manson on the Internet. So if you see any other channels associated with my name, they're not mine. It, it would be attached to my channel if it was. So, um, so I wanted to ask you, you have brought up comic books several times. So... It yeah. seems like you're a big fan of comics. What comics were you reading? I was reading Archie Comics, Casper, Richie Rich, Archie, Tom and Jerry, you know, like Looney Tunes, stuff like that I like more. 
I'm not into the superheroes so much, but more into the cartoon because I used to be a cartoonist. What do you like about dog. what do you like about Archie? It's just awesome. I just like the stories. I like the way they draw it, especially how they drew it uh, up until like the mid nineteen eighties. Did you like Little Lotta? Yeah. What was that comic book company? It was like Golden Key or something like that. Gold Key. Yeah, Gold Key. Gold Key Comics, and they had Dark Horse. I remember that. All right. Well, Minnie Manson, I want to appreciate you for uh, giving me this interview today and being one of the first guests on Grady TV. I think you're going to be our premier uh, episode on February 1st. Cool. Cool. And um, I hope you get better. Please I stay. Hope I, do too. I would like to get back to the music. I'm very despondent because I'm stuck in my apartment all the time and I can't do my music or play my guitar. I'm, I'm really trying to complete one goal a day and that's to get out of bed. And even if I'm lucky enough, by midnight every day, I try to do at least one chore or complete one goal. I've completed a lot of things. I've done a lot of things that I had stacks of paper everywhere. I finally took all of those papers and I wrote everything down in one book. So I've enjoyed a lot of television and video games. I'm just enjoying myself. The weather's pretty bad outside. And that's another reason why I want to go to Los Angeles. Yeah. I want to get out of my comfort zone and I want to go to Los Angeles. And at my age and with my health issues being so bad so consistently, the next time I get better, I just would like to move out there. Well, you know, Drizzle's looking for a roommate. I don't want to live with that guy. I'm just saying. I have a voucher. I have a voucher, and you know, I don't know what I'm going to do when I first get there. But my friends are saying they're going to help me. Oh, so you got you some know. friends? You got some friends out in LA? I have friends all over. All right. Well, Isn't May Manson. Cool. <laughs> May Manson, you get better. Cool. Thanks. I want to. I want to see you. Let me promote my channel. Yeah. Go ahead. Minnie Manson on YouTube. Buy my sticker, five dollars. All right, and I hope uh, cash um, app, my cash app. Can I say my cash app? Yeah, sure. I'm gonna put it on every video anyway, too. So okay, it's Minnie Manson talent, all one word. I also have a PayPal, which is also Minnie Manson talent. All right, so if somebody anyone wants, wants to donate. If somebody wants to donate, fine. If you want to pay me $20 to do a song for you, I'll do that. And I'll say you, I'll do the song, and I'll say your name in the song. You know, I, I did that a few times for people. This is my right. profession, so, you know, I try different ways to make money. I don't do in real life streams or things like that, so I have to find other ways to make money. Will you get better? We all want you uh, back singing. And hopefully we'll see you on some shows soon. And yeah. uh, that was Mitty Manson. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. You have a good night. Kiss. Well, um, I promoted my channel. And I want to let my fans know I appreciate your support during these times. And I don't mean to sound like a hypochondriac. I hope that I will get better soon. I'm, I got antibiotics now, and I'm really fighting for my life right now. Um, I have a whole slew of songs I plan on filming pretty soon. Hopefully by February, I'll be able to get to them. I'd like to give a shout out to Fat Sunny Records, by the way. Fat Sunny Records is kind of my de facto record label, and you'll find videos about me on that channel. I plan on doing some more things for them soon, provided my health gets better. Um, I also have another sticker with the 666 design. I don't know if you've seen it. I don't have it on me right now, but I only have two sticker designs. I have a magnet I sell for $10. That's my magnet. I laminate my magnets. Um, even have a coin. 
also ten dollars. It's just an NFT coin someone designed with my picture on it. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, I can see it. Looks okay. good. So, you know, and I also sell autographs for twenty dollars, eight by ten autograph. I'll kiss it with my lipstick, I'll sign it, I'll laminate it, and I will send that to you. Uh, um I don't know what else to say other than that, really. I just enjoy my music. Play my I have an electric guitar, I have a acoustic guitar. I actually have a what do you call it? Tambourine. Huh. Oh, my new gloves, you know, I got some new things coming, so Yeah, I can see you. Why is it so dark? There you go. This is what my fans, this is what Marilyn Manson and my fans like to see. <laughs> how often a day, how, how many times a day do you do that? At least once. Okay. At least once a day. I usually don't have my makeup on though, so I don't have to clean it every day. <laughs> but often, sexy. All right. Well, thank you for your time, Minnie. I'll be in, I'll You're be in welcome. touch, and I'll let you know when everything is going to go up. All right, Dan. All right. You have a good night and get better. Have a good night. Good night. Good night. Bye.